Our sheriff's office is part of a uh, interagency task force that responds to major events such as this. So we were called upon the following day the storm actually hit. We uh, we gathered up as many troops as we can. I think we initially went down with about 25 deputies and we staged in the, the town of Gonzales, Louisiana, which was just north of, uh, of New Orleans. And uh, the devastation didn't get bad until we were a little bit south mm -hmm. of Gonzales. And, and unlike most storms, Katrina, the, the big thing with it was the water. Mm -hmm. There was wind damage, as you see in, in most hurricanes, but the fact that New Orleans lives in a bowl, New Orleans is you know, there are places in New Orleans that are nine feet below sea level. And it's become habitable over the years due to the levee systems. Mm -hmm. And the fear all along was if the levees ever failed, there was nowhere for the water to go but in. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what we saw when we got down there, major flooding. And how were the people in that area? Did you see any crime? Uh, what was y'all's main mission to go down there? Was it search and rescue? Was it helping control the crime levels that they saw during the storm? Initially, it was the crime that was mm -hmm. being committed. Um, there was a lot of looting going on. Mm -hmm. There was there was a lot of gun violence going on. Uh, unfortunately, the the police in New Orleans were uh, you had some dedicated and staying on the job. You had others that were concerned about their families and got out of the area. Mm -hmm. So it kind of it left the place open to, to crime, mm -hmm. and, it, and it was it was rampant. Uh, when we first got down into New Orleans proper, close to the French Quarter and the Superdome and all that, there was any direction you wanted to look, you could see looting going on. It was it. What were some of the major crimes that you saw committed? Most of it was theft. Mm -hmm. um, there were, you know, nothing that I visibly saw uh, mm -hmm. as far as homicides or such, but the, the unfortunate thing about it was there was, we were not prepared. The mm -hmm. state of Louisiana was not prepared. I don't know if anyone in the country would have been prepared at the mm -hmm. time for the devastation of people being trapped in, in water like that. And uh, there was some death that we saw, some people that died due to drowning. There were some people that we saw that were uh, that you know appeared to have been victims of homicides that were left there. Uh, so it was it was it was uh, it was not over. The the day the storm hit and we realized how bad it was and the storm sat over the top of Houston and the the rain was relentless. Uh, so we made a decision, you know, as the storm was going on to come this direction. We had my daughter Lindsay here and my brother-in-law stayed behind and we were worried sick about them looking at the amount of water that was being dropped. My brother has a uh, four-wheel drive that has a small lift kit on it. For those that don't know, it's not a jacked up big truck, but it sits a little higher than others. And we hooked my boat on the back of it just in case that we got close and couldn't get all the way in here. Uh, we'd have my boat to finish, finish the trip. And so how were the road conditions from Alexandria to Houston? And did they have a lot of the roads closed off? When we got uh, into Texas, we started having some issues. Um, I guess about 60 miles in, there was some minor road flooding. It wasn't anything that we couldn't make it through. As we got close to Houston and, you know, the outer skirt, the, uh, I can't remember the, the big loop, the, one further out of Houston, but then things started getting pretty bad. There were uh, three and four foot of water over some of the main thoroughfares. There was a lot of current. There was a couple of times that <clears throat> the current was strong enough to push our truck and boat to the side. Uh, the, you know, there was police officers set up at, at the dangerous areas, slowing people down, and they were keeping everybody pretty much out with the exception of law enforcement. And I have to commend them that they, they were prepared and did a, did a very good job. And so how did you manage to navigate? Because I know certain roads were closed off. Um, and so do you think it was um, easy or difficult to get through those areas? It was very difficult. We, uh, you know, as we would go one direction thinking that we were going to be able to get down to where, where y'all were, 
uh, we'd run into a roadblock and ultimately in the end what we ended up doing I think I had my find my iPhone app on my phone so my wife and, and sister-in-law who were back at my house in Louisiana were able to track where we were and uh, Christy my sister-in-law being from here was was able to kind of get on a map and guide us through what roads could possibly be open and and that's how we were able to get into Houston property. I'll never forget this when I was on my way here leaving the house that was that was on my mind because I saw it and witnessed it in Katrina and I called uh, I called my uh, first cousin's husband Dale Strickland and told Dale what my concerns was. They live on the outskirts of Houston and, and we were keeping tabs on them to make sure they were okay and I, I told him, I said, well, I'm worried about my daughter uh, because of, you know, what I saw at Katrina. And he said, Robert, I, I want to stop you right there. And I said, well, what is it, Dale? And he said, this is Texas. This is not New Orleans. That's not going to happen here. And he was right. It didn't. I was just so thankful to get, get my daughter and brother-in-law back that uh, I felt very blessed that, you know, everything worked out the way it did. So. Uh, I just have to give that one to the man upstairs.